Good evening. How are you? Uh, Ryan, thank you. Looks like you kept uh, some news for us today. <laughs> We did our best. <laughs> Trying to work multiple time zones. So, Ryan. <laughs> yes, MG. Um, first and foremost, are you going to resign on stage? <laughs> Last no. year, you know, I come out here, think I'm doing this really awesome Twitter talk, and you know, me and Jason Goldman were going to talk about all things, you know, the future of Twitter. And, and you did. And we did. And then he resigned right after on stage. <laughs> yeah. um, so you know, I hope this isn't like a Madden curse or something where everyone who talks to me is uh, shortly thereafter disappears from Twitter. No, hopefully I have a, a good future ahead of Twitter still. Okay, so you did have quite a bit uh, of news yesterday. I did. Um, you've got some, uh, a, a new product, which, which I guess we'll refer to as new, new Twitter. Wait um, till the new version comes out. <laughs> right, in what, six weeks, another yeah. new version? Um, so why don't you go into a bit about the story behind it, how it came about, and really what the vision from Twitter's perspective is for the, new, the newest version. If people haven't seen it yet, you can, what's the URL they can go to online to see the preview that was? Uh, yeah, fly.twitter.com if you want to see the, the preview of what the new version looks like. Um, or you can uh, kind of jump to the front of the queue so that as we roll things out, you'll be right up front by downloading the uh, iPhone, Android uh, apps, or going to mobile.twitter.com and, and logging in there. Right, so most people probably are, are well aware of it, but uh, it's only rolled out to a small percentage small of users. Percent. So yeah, so go into the, the backstory of it a bit. Yeah, you know, I think um, Dick has talked about it best. Uh, in a world where I think Facebook and Google are looking at kind of competing on features and those, those systems are getting more and more complex, Twitter really wants to focus in on being simple. Being a simple product that's easy to use that goes across from SMS to feature phones to smartphones and go globally. Um, and the only way to do that is to be consistent, be simple, and be fast. Um, so I think the, when you look at the new version, there's like, it's focused on that part of it, which is the simple, fast, easy to use, mm -hmm. and then also helping people discover all of this great content that's on Twitter. So is, this, um, is it fair to say that this is kind of the first big project of, of Jack Dorsey since he's been back, you know, kind of leading the, the product team? Or is this, uh, is this really more of a, of a bigger picture thing that's been in the works for a while? Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of both. I think, you know, um, Dick internally has been talking a lot about these same concepts for a long time. I think what Jack brings to the table is a real focus on the simplicity and the minimalism of things, and just a, in general, a focus on a few key concepts. So, um, again, concepts that we've been thinking about and talking about at Twitter for a long time, but I think Jack has really brought in that, that focus that uh, the company needed to really roll out a product that can get to, you know, 7 billion users. What does this mean? Does, do you think that this means that new Twitter, meaning the old version of Twitter, which was new at the time, whenever it was, when you guys launched it last year, does that mean this, that was a failure, or were there things that you specifically took away from that to rope them into the new, this newest version? Yeah, I think we learned a ton from that. And you, I think if you look at the product, you really start to dissect it. It's an evolution of a lot of those things. One of the great examples is kind of the uh, expanded tweets. So the ability to put enriched content like photos or videos, um, Foursquare check-ins right in the kind of context of the tweet. We started that path um, with the old new Twitter, but it was expanded out to the right pane. But we learned was it wasn't driving enough engagement because it was too disconnected. Mm -hmm. So we learned that the, the concept and the principle was right, but the actual um, fundamentals of how we were doing it um, needed to be fixed, and the new version incorporates that. And you know, before this morning, you of course tweeted out that you were coming here and, and uh, kind of wanted some feedback. Obviously, you've seen some of the feedback so far. Um, it's been, it seems pretty mixed. I think that's fair to say. Some of it is very positive. I'd say very positive. Uh, right. I think it's, it's been, uh, and I would say very negative, so, so mixed. <laughs> um, no, I think it's, you know, I think it has kind of spanned the whole spectrum, and I'm assuming that's, that's to be expected when you do a major change. Obviously, anytime Facebook or, or Google does something big, that it, it pisses off a certain percentage of the, uh, the users. And, and in particular, it seems like some of the, the, longer you, the older users who are well acclimated to some of the older features and, and maybe some of the power users uh, were a bit um, surprised by some of the changes that you made. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was good to address some of those. A few of the ones were, um, first and foremost, where did DMs go? Why are those now no longer a main, uh, a, a main part of, of the navigation itself? It's now relegated under the, uh, the Me tab, both on the, the website and on the mobile apps that you've released. So what was the thinking there? Well, I think uh, the overall strategy of this, again, when you're, 
when you're trying to simplify a product, you have to make some really tough decisions. You have to sit down as a team and really think through the interactions. What are the right things to emphasize and keep narrowing that down and edit it down so you get to the right set of things that we think will be most impactful. Um, I do kind of challenge the concept that I think DMs are totally relegated. They are still one click away and they are still part of the product. Um, but relative to how people use the product, it, it is, it's kind of representative of how and where we want to focus our energies, which is on your main timeline, your ability to connect and see how people connect with you, and then the ability to discover great new content and users. So you guys have had obviously internally been testing this out for a while, been dog food testing it. Um, how did the employees themselves react to it? And, and was there anything in, uh, specifically that you liked best about the new product? So employees testing, it's always an interesting thing because you test from very early days and you start to kind of see the evolution of it as it gets better. Um, and we're all very critical because we know where it can be and where we want it to be. And we want to challenge each other to do the right stuff. We're asking the questions about is that even the right icon? Do, is that the right layout? All of that stuff. So I think there was an amazingly and, and fantastic healthy debate internally about the right things. Mm -hmm. um, I think once we actually were getting towards launch, we're seeing a kind of packaged product. Um, most of the company felt really, really good about it. And they're still asking really hard questions right up until the day we launched. Uh, for me personally, one of my favorite sections is actually the one called activity, mm -hmm. which takes the people in your social graph and the things that they do, who they follow, uh, who they favorite, what they retweet, and brings that to you. Because I think that's actually a great vector to find great content and, and great users to follow. So you had kind of soft launched this a bit because it was baked in a little bit to the, the old new Twitter. Um, and now it's, now it's just a, its own individual tab where you've you've kind of combined that with the, the old school mentions, and you, and you can toggle between the two now. Yeah, exactly. So that, I think, was a little more obvious to people. I think the discover area is the one that was the biggest bet for us, right. um, and the biggest change from where we had been. Right. And the, the real thinking behind that one is you know, we get, uh, I think you know, Dick's talked about 250 million tweets a day flowing through the system. It's more than a billion tweets per week, which is kind of mind-blowing when I was talking to Robert backstage when he originally joined on, and you could kind of watch you know, the words like Twitter tweets kind of slowly roll in. Um, now it's just massive amounts of content, 100 million active users. So the biggest challenge we have in front of, actually I think we have two big challenges, but one of the biggest challenges is um, making sure that we connect people with the content that is most interesting to them. And you have this curated timeline and say an average user follows 50 to 100, maybe 1,000 people, but there's these amazing stories happening around them that they're not following them. And we need to do a great job of understanding who that user is, what they're interested in, and then connecting them with the content that we think that they're gonna care about. And that's something that uh, Dick Stolo had brought up several months ago, and I thought was an interesting point that, you know, to use Twitter, you don't have to tweet. And so is it fair to say that the Discovery tab kind of comes about as a result of that? It's a way to kind of view content when you first sign up or, you know, as, as you continue to look for, for new and interesting content out there. Uh, you don't really have to do anything for it. It just is, is kind of comes into your stream. Yeah, I think um, we learned uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, was the big kind of switch internally where it used to be a big text box sitting above your home timeline kind of waiting for you to like enter do something. something right. And we learned really in most cases that uh, a smaller percentage of your users are ever going to be content creators. We actually have an incredibly high percentage relative to most social sites. But the real kind of uh, progressive engagement is getting someone signed up, getting them to create an amazing timeline of interesting uh, accounts to follow, and they start to consume content. Eventually, they'll start to retweet, they'll favorite things, and then eventually, they'll start tweeting. So we needed to make sure that we put that in the right order and focus on creating a great consumption experience that create great connections in the network, and then eventually get them to tweeting and not make that be the first bid order. And one thing we talked briefly about backstage, you know, obviously, the move away from taking direct messages off of off the main navigation and, and to, to do that, you did that to make room for the discovery tab. And so the discovery tab is obviously something that you guys are going to be hugely focusing on going forward. And you said, you know, you've made several investments. Like, you want that to be a, a key feature of Twitter for now. Yeah, I mean, Discover is going to be one of the most important things that we do, not only in 2012, but I, I think as a company and beyond. Uh, we acquired JewelPan in New York fairly recently. Um, they're going to be focused on that. Mm -hmm. um, we as a company are going to be focused very heavily on the science of it, but also the experience of it. Another uh, a new thing that hasn't been talked about too much, but uh, is pretty interesting, is embeddable tweets. So you can kind of take the, the tweets that you, you love, and, and if you want to uh, uh, reference them anywhere else on the web, and you can put them in. Obviously, with, uh, with TechCrunch, we've had that, that capability for a bit, because WordPress had their own solution. But now, it's really about putting them anywhere on the web and being able to interact with tweets, right? Totally. I, I think this is actually one of the most important parts of the launch. And it's a little quieter, because it plays to a different audience than kind of the whole relaunch. Um, but if you go to any permalink page, 
page, there's a new link there that says embed this tweet, and you get kind of a YouTube-like interface to grab content and take that tweet and take it anywhere on the web to embed it. And the difference from how um, WordPress had originally been doing and now they're using the new stuff um, is that all the stuff is built natively with Twitter. So you can follow that person right in line without having to do a pop-up or move to a new page. You can favorite the content. But the content really starts to live in all of the areas where those audience exist. One of the beautiful things about Twitter, the unique things about Twitter, is the fact that we have this like totally engaging public content that's used in stories. Um, just yesterday with the Virginia Tech shooting, um, the Virginia Tech local newspaper, the school newspaper, was using Twitter to send out messages to all of the students uh, as the shooting was going on. Yeah, that's and they were actually to embed the tweets and all these stories to help tell the story of what happened there from the voice of the people that were there. And that's something that we want to happen and we want to see tweets in every place that users want to consume them. Um, another big feature of, of new new Twitter is the, the, the pages themselves, uh, your landing page, and especially for brands, because you'll have a little strip where they can kind of put, um, put graphics and stuff and, and kind of make it more of a, of a representation of the brand. Talk a little bit about that. Why, why go in that direction? So I... First of all, we don't call them brand pages because uh, those same features will be available to all users at some mm -hmm. point. Um, they are starting with a few advertisers now as we roll it out, but those yeah. same features will be available to everybody. Um, but I, I think it gets back to that. You used a good keyword there, representation. Um, basic users, musicians, small businesses, enterprises, uh, advertisers all want to be able to express themselves differently. And I think we need to do a better job of not only helping them express themselves, but also take the amazing content that they create on a daily basis and help them kind of promote that up to the top of the page so that users can engage with it more. And going, you know, going back a bit to some of the criticism, <clears throat> it seems like uh, a lot of people, when you tweeted that out, pointed me to uh, John Gruber's post. He, he had a post this morning talking uh, most, most directly about uh, the iOS apps. And of course, Android has now been updated to be along the same lines, uh, just the differences in using them. How do you respond to that? How important is the element of unification across the web and the mobile platforms versus the way that people were used to using it before? Mm -hmm. That's something we discussed at great length internally. Um, because one of the things I think was hurting us with usage was a totally inconsistent experience across all devices. So iPad, iPhone, Android, web, um, all were, were somewhat different. They had some of the same actions, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. So part of this process in making it simpler and easier was to unify those, but still take what each platform does natively and uniquely and still leverage that really well. So um, a really good example of that is in the iPhone, navigation is at the bottom, but in Android, they've right, chosen the default to the top. Yep. It's silly to think that like those should have to be in the same place on both. So we want to take the uh, affordances that each platform provides and map those same uh, principles and ideas to each platform, but have it consistent so that any user can and flow seamlessly between those and still be able to engage in the same way. Is it fair to say, though, that, that that decision is more about new users? Because Twitter, while huge already, still has a massive amount to grow if you guys are to be ultimately one of the, you know, the key elements on the web itself. Uh, so is it fair to say that, that that's really a, a decision made to, to help onboard new users as opposed to kind of just making it for ev everyone else. And, and obviously, you know that when you make a change, it's going to, to annoy some, some older users. Totally. I, I think it's a balance that you want to strike all the time. And I, I think um, in a world where you keep trying to make things simpler, you're going to have to keep looking at data and listen to users about what's the right mix of things that they want and care about. And that's going to evolve over time as well. Um, but I think for sure, you know, we, we talked yesterday about the fact that we want to be on sev 7 billion devices around the world, helping people connect everywhere. And in order to do that, we have to make some really hard choices about what are the right things to emphasize and what are the right things to, uh, to uh, de-emphasize. And another you know, important element of that uh, is that there is still the Tweet Deck product. And, and you yourself were in London yesterday uh, over, over th there with those guys. And you launched the new, the new version of it, which I have to uh, applaud you for getting off that awful air platform. <laughs> applaud <which> them. Is... <laughs> <laughs> they did all the hard work. <laughs> God, it, it is a lot better. And it, and it looks pretty nice now. And it's, uh, you know, it's, all, it's all natively done. It's in the, it's in the Mac App Store um, uh, for Mac, obviously. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that product? Is that, is that really the Twitter Pro? Is that how you guys view it? Yeah, I'm actually really, really proud of that team. I think they did an amazing job. They rewrote that product from scratch, uh, HTML5, so it's available on the web, and the same way it's available natively on uh, the Mac App Store. 
But really, yeah, we look at that as an audience thing. So the, the main, you know, Twitter.com product that everyone kind of knows and loves um, is for the core audience, the people that are you know, kind of onboarding core users. And we look at that uh, TweetDeck product as kind of the, you know, our Twitter for newsrooms. I walked around um, New York, this was probably about a little over a year ago. And as we walked through each newsroom from CNN to New York Times to Wall Street Journal, everyone had full screen tweet deck. And we knew at that point there was a really important product for these key audiences for us. People who are th doing things like curating lists, who are doing tons of searches, who have to keep these things going at the same time. We wanted a product to serve their needs. And it's best if you can help them focus on the needs of those specific audiences and build the right product for them. And you brought up lists, and that's also important to bring up, I think. Uh, an another big point of criticism was that you guys are now bearing lists, and lists might be dead. but. <laughs> you guys are still very much supporting them, right? You, you don't have anything new that you did with this release, but, and they are, uh, you know, one more click, I think, buried in the, uh, in the navigation structure under the, the, the Me tab, but you are still very much supporting them. Right? Yeah, the, the death of lists is much overreported. Yeah. Um, again, we moved it into another area. It's still literally one click away. It's right on profile pages. So lists as a product are not going away. I think, if anything, we're going to invest in them because we think curation is, is really important. Um, but we need to really invest in it and make it a better product before we think about and try and compete that with, like, what are the right things that we need to de-emphasize to move that up. And, uh, you know, g going to something else I think that was brought up yesterday during the, um, during the unveiling, uh, a pretty impressive number talking about the iOS 5 integration. Uh, of course, Twitter is now a, a part of that operating system. And I, I believe uh, Dick said that it, it boosted signups by 25% uh, of, of new users. It's, that's pretty massive. It's how, <laughs> how big has that opportunity been? When, uh, when you think about how many new users we get in a day globally, a 25% increase is, is pretty mind-blowing. So yeah. um, I, I think it's pretty safe to, to call that a, a huge success. <laughs> is there anything else you can share about that without uh, Apple pulling around a black van uh, I think they're watching. shoving you in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you know, one of the... From, a, from the platform standpoint, uh, I was really excited about all the things that the new, new Apple integration opened up for all of our partners. Um, and we saw at launch, we worked with like 10 companies that do really deep, interesting integrations. Soundtracking did an awesome job so that when you soundtrack a song, if that artist is on Twitter, they help you follow that artist on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, when you tweet out that song, it puts at Kanye West instead of Kanye West. So I think there's a lot of really interesting things. I think we're just at the kind of tip of the iceberg for um, what that's going to unlock. But I think Twitter becomes this beautiful horizontal social layer on this beautifully integrated kind of vertical uh, operating system. So and I'm excited for what it holds. It's, uh, it's also important to note that there are still, of course, other third-party clients. You know, Tweetbot's a popular one. There's, there's several other ones. And those are still going to be available. These changes do not change any of that that you've Yeah, no. I mean, it's, we've always had kind of the same policy that um, I think Tapbots and uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter Later New have done amazing stuff. They've actually written some beautiful clients, and we like what they're doing, and, and we love to, to see them keep going. But at the same time, there is a, a direct emphasis within the company itself to kind of to, to get to what you were talking about to streamline the process for the users, for them to use the Twitter clients themselves. That's fair to say, right? Yeah, totally. We in the statement we kind of made to them is we are going to invest as heavily as we can in those core experiences on our side. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the best we can to keep kind of iterating, but that doesn't mean that they, they can't also build a business. So I want to talk a bit about the company now while we have a, a few minutes left. Um, I think it was shared yesterday that you're at 700 employees now, or over 700. That's How crazy. many were there when you started? Uh, about 45, I think. Wow. So about that's, two and a half years ago. So that's, that's a huge change. Crazy growth, yeah. What's, uh, what's it like internally? I mean, what's the difference there? Is, is it more bureaucratic? Do you view it? Um, or, or is it still kind of a fun atmosphere to work in? Yeah, I, I'm an entrepreneurial guy. I've never worked in a company of more than 50 people. Um, and I, I love the environment we're in, so I, I don't have anything to compare against because I've never been at a bureaucratic company, a really large company. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the executive team has an amazing focus on making sure that we stay innovative, we have a great culture, that we hire the best people in the industry. And that, to me, is what's really important, is that we like, keep adding great people to the team that like, challenge us and make us go every day. But I think one of the most fascinating things of being at a company that has gone through that kind of growth is watching kind of this like amoeba change over time right. and seeing you know, the, the operational stuff that you have at 40 people is not the same that works at 150, is not the same at 500, and has to change again you know, to 1,000. So we're constantly like, assessing and talking about what's the right way to organize this, what's the right way to put teams together, how do we build the best products. So um, it's been a, an incredibly fun ride, and I think we're at the best place we are, that we have been as a company right now, and I'm really excited for where we're going. At the same time, though, you, I mean, there has been, everyone has, has read about the various changes, there has been a bit of turnover recently, and you know, 
Is that, do you view that as more of a, uh, a, a natural progression? You know, Twitter is, uh, is a certain, uh, you know, is a certain age now and things are different from when it started and, and the product is evolving. Is it more of a natural thing? Yeah, I mean, there's not that many hyper-growth companies, right? So it's hard to compare it to, but I think it's very natural for what you see happen at Facebook. It's very natural with what happened to other companies. It's, uh, again, as a person going through it personally, you have to kind of make those decisions as you go along the way if this is the right place for you, and the company has to make that decision as well. But I think it's a totally natural thing. Um, you know, to that end are obviously the two high-profile exits in the... Uh, you know, over the past year and a half or whatever, have been Evan Williams and Biz Stone, who are two of the co-founders. Um, are they still involved in any way? Do they, are they going to send a Christmas presents? Do they come by the <laughs> office? Like, what's, Actually, what's Biz now? was just there, I want to say two weeks ago. I'm kind of losing track of time for uh, tea time. Yeah. So they are still involved. They're doing their own thing. They're back at doing obvious and, and building great products. That's what they do. And um, they're both great guys. And, and they were the ones that brought me in. And I, I um, have a ton of respect for them. But so they're, they're still involved with the company, but they're definitely still doing their own thing. Do they, do they get access to kind of what you guys are doing now, you know, with, with new, new Twitter? Did they, did they see it? Did you guys consult them before rolling it out? Or is it just kind of, uh, you know, they're there as, as more, you know, that's the old regime and let's, let's focus on the new regime? That's a good question. I mean, for me personally, I wasn't involved in that, but I yeah. don't know if they were or if they weren't. Okay. Um, but obviously, Jack is, is highly involved once again, you know, uh, was, you know, the original CEO at the time and, and then went away for a bit and now is back. I'm interested in what your perspective is on the other company, of course, that he's leading, which is Square. How do those two teams kind of view each other? Is it kind of like, oh, well, that's the other family living in the other house. That's Jack's other family. Or, you know, <laughs> is, there, is there is a symbiotic relationship there? It's actually it's a that? really good relationship. I know uh, we've had a bunch of meetings with uh, Megan Quinn on their product side and have, uh, I think, a really good relationship. We are a few blocks from each other. Um, I think as we both kind of move forward, there's going to be more ways for us to look to work together. Um, but, it, you know, I think it's a really positive relationship overall. Uh, I want to talk a, bit, a little bit about design because that's, that's another uh, important element of, of what you guys have done with, with the newest version. You know, you have a nice little quill. Uh, you have a nice little birdhouse. and, and the all little this. touches. <laughs> it seems like design has always kind of been uh, an important point for Twitter. Um, and now we're seeing, you know, your rivals, Facebook and Google specifically, make a lot of moves in the design field. You know, they're making a lot of hires to try and, and put a lot of emphasis on design. How does Twitter view design as, as important to the product itself? It's, uh, it's one of the most critical things, and I think we have one of the best design teams in the industry, if not the best design team. Watching them go through this iteration of building uh, this new version of Twitter was just unbelievable. We bought a huge plotter, this like, you know, six-foot printer. They would work on designs every day. They'd put them up. They'd bring the team in to kind of work with them on it. So I think we have an amazing design team, um, but the real kind of trilogy at the company is design, product, and engineering. Mm -hmm. And you want that good creative tension that works between all groups that works out to kind of like you know, the sum being greater than uh, all the parts. And I think that's exactly where we are because the, the engineering team challenges and gives ideas to the design team. The design team can riff on those. And the product managers there kind of edit that down and make sure it goes in the right direction. Talk a bit about the, uh, the, the platform itself. Obviously, this is something that, that you've been heavily involved in throughout the past few years. How is the, the health of the ecosystem with, th with regard to third-party developers? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something I think about all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, I think, in one of the best places it's been, too. So we announced, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe three or four months ago, that we had over 750,000 developers that have created a platform on the system, or created an app on the system, which is just amazing. And that doesn't include tweet buttons and follow buttons, which is in the millions of websites. So mm -hmm. um, the ecosystem is amazing, which I relate back to. Um, we're trying to put this into context. It's larger than the population of the state of Vermont, which probably doesn't play as well here. Um, but it puts into context just the size and the constituents within the ecosystem. Um, I think we need to do a better job of helping give them the right products to go build and innovate on top of. And I think we're very focused on that this year. Uh, but we've also spent the past uh, six months really engaging with the community. We did a, a tour through Europe, uh, we did a tour through the US, and a tour through Asia um, to come and talk to developers all around about what are, you know, listen to them about what are their needs, where are they finding success, where are they running into problems, and what can we do to help them. So I think we've, we've built a great team, we're doing a lot of listening, and I think we are excited for 2012. What's, uh, what's the most recent wording on, on what guidance you would give to third-party developers? Obviously, there was a lot of controversy when you kind of, when you guys came in and said, you know, maybe it's not the best idea for you guys to be just focusing on building clients yourselves because we 
as we can see now, we want to kind of unify everything and make a more unified experience. So what, what, is it, what are the big opportunities on the Twitter ecosystem for people to, uh, to be able to develop for? Yeah, I, I think that's the thing we hear the most um, from entrepreneurs, from venture capitalists, is like, where's Twitter going so that we can help work with you and build a really valuable product on the side? Um, and we've kind of had that same message for the past, you know, since March, whatever that'd be now, seven months, mm -hmm. um, which is that, you know, we're going to invest really heavily in that core experience, but there are massive opportunities outside of that. So um, one of the areas that we're, we're really bullish on, obviously, is analytics. Uh, so we have an incredibly healthy analytics market, but it still has a ton of opportunity left. Uh, Radian 6 got acquired for $326 million by Salesforce, who's here. Um, and I think there's going to be more exits like that in the analytics space. Another great company that we think is doing a good job there is called Data Miner, um, where they look at the stream for variants. Uh, they have a, a large team of quants that sit there and look at for variants in language to be market predictors for the financial sector. And they can alert uh, financial dashboards like 15, 20 minutes before Bloomberg just based on the Twitter stream. So I think there's huge opportunities in analytics, enterprise, curation. Um, we've kind of had that same, same messaging for a while now. And so we're, we're out of time, but the final thing I, I guess I wanted to bring up was with all the, you know, the, the messaging out there for developers to keep developing, obviously there needs to be a Twitter in the future. And for there to be a Twitter in the future, there needs to be a monetizable business. How are things going on that end? And, and is stuff that you rolled out with, with new, new Twitter, is, is that kind of pushing towards that? I know there's no specific new uh, monetizable elements of it, but is, the, is that being thought of uh, as part of the whole, you know, the three tenets that you kind of brought up earlier? Yeah, I think Dick talks about it best. It's like revenue is like air. You need it to like live and you need it to support yourself, but it's not the point of living. And we look at revenue in the same way. It's incredibly healthy. The early numbers from us putting uh, promoted tweets and timelines are insane. Some of the uh, campaigns have come back with 5% engagement, which when you compare that to like standard uh, display advertising, which is like 0.03, 0.05, mm -hmm. that's insane. Um, so we're really, really excited about where that's going. Now we seem to get everything in place to really scale that up in an in a interesting but um, careful way so that we continue to get the, the trust of users and build the right product. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. For yeah, thanks, MG. Wow. <laughs> a lot of uh, thanks, Loic. <laughs> lot of cool stuff. Wait, wait, wait! I have something for you. Oh wow! I have uh, a jam oh, box. Oh, look at that! For UMG too. Oh, I get one too. All wow. right. Wow. Hosein Ryan, the that CEO awesome. of uh, Jobon, sent us these for. Thank us you speakers. very much. <laughs> yeah, Hosein. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, it's incredible. It's been a, a fun week. We're excited. We still have a ton of work to do. This is kind of the the beginning of it, but there's a lot more to do and a lot more to come. Very excited. Thank thanks you for having us, Loic. We appreciate it. And great platform. Thank very you. Impressed. <laughs> okay. MG, thanks, see you later. Yes. Thank <laughs> you.